Was Rey a Mary Sue? Meaning, is she a character who is just good at everything she needs to be and always finds a way to get herself out of every single situation? Well, looking at it as objectively as possible and just within the context of The Force Awakens, yes, that does seem to be the case. However, what needs to be kept in mind is Episode 7 wasn't the whole story, but rather just the beginning. And right now, we know almost nothing about who or maybe even what Rey truly is. So her innate ability to use the Force or seemingly channel it with perhaps absolutely no training, likely will get explained in episode 8, and hopefully in a very satisfying way. And if it doesn't, I'll likely be the first one to start griping about that. But why did Lucasfilm make her this way? Why did they seemingly make her good at everything? Because her channeling the Force wasn't the only thing that made her a Mary Sue. There's also the fact she knew how to fight, was a great pilot, and knew the Falcon seemingly as well as the longtime owner of it, Han Solo did. And exactly why they decided to make Rey this way is the question no one seems to ask, or they'd rather quickly dismiss it in favor of calling it poor storytelling or Disney just trying to shove a strong female character down our throat. But that's a bit short-sighted, because no matter what you believe, Disney and Lucasfilm didn't just make Rey the way she is for no good reason. They do have a plan, and likely a good one. And when you really think about it, making Rey a strong character just because would defeat the purpose of what they're trying to accomplish with her, which is create a memorable character we all cared about because of what she will face and overcome as the story plays out. And this is the same way a lot of us care about the character of Luke Skywalker because of everything he faced and went through and managed to overcome in the original trilogy. And keep in mind, pretty much everything went Luke's way in Episode 4 or A New Hope. Yes, he got knocked around by some Tusken Raiders, and he likely would have been killed in the cantina had Obi-Wan not stepped in. But after that, he went on to help rescue Leia from the Death Star before going on to pull off that one in a million shot to blow it up. That's an impressive start for a farm boy from Tatooine. But then came The Empire Strikes Back, and Luke was not only tested to his very limits, but made a decision that nearly had dire consequences for the whole galaxy. That being when he abandoned his training to try to save his friends, knowing he'd likely encounter Vader. Yes, that decision is what ultimately defines Luke as a character, as someone who cares about others more than himself, which is the very personification of what a Jedi is. But that encounter really should have ended one of two ways, with Luke's death or him turning to the dark side. The fact that Luke survived and remained on the light side was either pure luck or the will of the Force itself. And even though you might initially roll your eyes at the thought that The Last Jedi will be a lot like The Empire Strikes Back, the simple fact of the matter is it has to be. It is the second act of the story, the one where things will get the darkest for our characters, which means Rey will face some type of challenge that will either make or break her, just like Luke did. And whereas Luke came back a stronger character in Return of the Jedi after the trials he faced in The Empire Strikes Back, what could be very interesting is if Rey does not. And before you completely dismiss the idea, mainly because you think Disney would never go for the twist of a dark side Rey because she's their new princess, keep in mind the only direction she can really go right now is down, which may be one of the hidden reasons they made her such a strong character at the start. People love a hero, but for whatever reason, what they love even more is to see a hero fall, and I dare say a lot of people out there would really love to see Rey fail, before, of course, ultimately coming back to the light, because something else we love is to see redemption. Now, I'm not really trying to defend Disney and Lucasfilm here, despite how it may sound. I did like The Force Awakens, but I've questioned a lot of the decisions they've made with it in other videos, including having Rey defeat Kylo Ren at the end of the movie, because even though I compared Luke and Rey to each other earlier, his blowing up the Death Star was one thing, her defeating Kylo, who had training from both Luke and Snoke, is another entirely. It's almost akin to Luke running into Vader in A New Hope and defeating him, which sounds utterly ridiculous and likely would have ruined Vader's character going forward. Which then makes us ask, has Kylo Ren's character been ruined? Now, I've heard from some people who do feel that way, but I think Kylo's defeat at Rey's hand is going to be a huge part of his story going forward. In fact, it almost better be, or why have him lose to her in the first place? I'd have to imagine Kylo is extremely intrigued by Rey right now, and just who and what she might be. As is Snoke, no doubt. I wouldn't be surprised if Rey is what ultimately divides Kylo Ren and Snoke, since both will likely have a plan for her, not unlike how both Palpatine and Vader had plans for Luke. I'd also have to imagine both of them either already know, or soon will, exactly who or what she is. As I've said in other videos, I wouldn't be surprised if Kylo Ren is the one that reveals the truth about Rey's origin, both to her and us the audience. 
and that it will be her make her or break her moment, and that it also might have something to do with Luke either lying to her or using her for his own agenda, which may end up breaking her and turning her against Luke going into episode 9, and leave us all with one hell of a cliffhanger. Anyway, one way or the other what Rey did, channeling the Force, needs to have a great explanation. Anything less than a spectacular answer, and hence a satisfying one, may very well ruin the whole trilogy. Everything hinges on us liking and caring about Rey and being invested in her journey, and buying the explanation they give on how she used the Force the way she did, conceivably with little or no training, is of the utmost importance. But what about everything else she was good at? What about the fact that she was a great fighter, pilot, and mechanic? Why make her good at all those things? After all, flawed characters feel like real characters to us, and Rey didn't seem to have any flaws, so why make her that way? Why make her know the Falcon inside and out, for example, seemingly as well as Han Solo knew it? Well, there's actually a very simple answer for that. It allowed her to bond with Han. So much so, in fact, that he offered her a spot on his crew when initially he was ready to drop her off at the first habitable planet. And this movie was trying to establish three very important relationships, two of which will be important for the rest of the trilogy, and those would be between Rey and Finn, and between Finn and Poe. And then there was the one relationship that needed to work for The Force Awakens itself to work, and that was between Han and Rey. In fact, the relationship between Han and Rey is at the very center of the movie, just like the relationship between Rey and Luke will be at the center of The Last Jedi. And if Han takes to Rey in The Force Awakens and sees the value in her, we're more likely to take to Rey and see the value in her. And in order for us to believe that's happened, the two needed something to bond over. And could there be a better choice than to make that bonding over the Falcon? Especially when you consider Han died in this movie, which left the future of the Falcon in flux. And the Falcon is as much a character in Star Wars as anyone or anything else. So Rey knowing it the way she did, and as Han said in the movie, appreciating it, made it acceptable to see her in the pilot's chair at the end of the movie with Chewie at her side. We also believe Chewie would allow her to be the new caretaker since Han had liked her and she already knew the ship so well. And the fact that we'd seen her fly it earlier in the movie and fly it well means we don't question that aspect of it either. And then of course Rey watching Han get murdered by his son needed to be a huge defining event for Rey in her life. And that only happens if the two have formed a true bond that we believe, which we both see and have the movie more or less tell us when Kylo Ren is mind probing Rey and finds out she sees Han as the father she never had. And I have to wonder if this revelation played into Kylo Ren's decision to ultimately kill his father instead of turn his saber over to him and come home. Anyway, all of this helps explain why Rey finally decides to embrace her destiny and seek out Luke, and that is to honor and possibly even seek to avenge Han, who was like her father. And thus, all the goals of this movie are accomplished. Those being for us to start to care about Rey and her story, and to get her to Luke in a somewhat natural feeling way, so that her journey can continue in the next two movies. And if you find it too convenient that Rey just happened to be good at all these things she needed to be, mainly fighting, flying, and knowledge of ships, well one of the main reasons they made her a scavenger of all things in the first place, on such a desolate planet, was to explain all these things. Of course growing up on Shaku she'd learn how to defend herself, or she would have been either killed or taken advantage of at every turn. And in order to know what parts were what and the value of them, she needed to have an incredible knowledge of many different types of ships, again, or she would have never survived. As for her piloting skills, which really don't get touched on in the movie, well, the book Before the Awakening does try to answer that question by letting us know that she found a flight simulator at one point, one that could mimic many different types of ships, and she spent most of her free time practicing on it. In fact, she got so good at it that she even had to rig it and put herself into impossible situations just for it to be a challenge for her. Is this the best explanation for her skills? Well, no, not really, because we don't get that touched upon in the movie. But we already know that with force sensitivity, usually comes piloting skills, so that is the best answer we can give for that. Now again, I'm not trying to defend Disney here, because I actually think they've almost put themselves in a no-win situation with Rey, that they've cornered themselves, if you will. Because if they give some grand explanation to Rey and her powers, that she is something very rare and special unlike anything we've seen before, many will roll their eyes and just keep calling her a Mary Sue and continue to cry poor storytelling. However, if her origins aren't grand enough, meaning not enough to explain how she did what she did in The Force Awakens, people are again going to cry Mary Sue and say it's poor storytelling. In other words, unless Ryan Johnson and Disney and Lucasfilm have a true, brilliantly crafted story and origin for Rey awaiting us, 
there is going to be a lot of unhappy Star Wars fans. Then again, one way or another, there are going to be a lot of unhappy fans. That's just the way it is. And that's not exactly a bad thing either. Because if all we do is praise Disney and Lucasfilm every time they give us something new with Star Wars slapped on it, then they're bound to get lazy and the quality of what they give us will suffer. But as long as there's a vocal group of fans out there to challenge them, even if they generally like what they're getting, they'll stay on their toes and keep trying to improve. So the next time you hear people complaining about what they didn't like about The Force Awakens, or even that it's the worst movie they've ever seen, and that Disney is destroying Star Wars, let them have their say. Because, in an odd sort of way, they are helping to guarantee a bright future for Star Wars. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to let me know what you think. Was Rey a little too much in The Force Awakens? Will she be truly challenged in The Last Jedi? And do you think we could see her turn to the dark side? Let me know in the comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. Also, if you liked this video, check out some of my other ones or go ahead and subscribe. If you've already done all that, then thanks for your continued support. If you want to know when I upload new videos, hit the notification button or just follow me on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching.